Okay, in this video we're going to talk about multiplying fractions. And in order to multiply fractions, we're going to make use of our greatest common factor work and also our work on simplifying fractions because we want to make sure that our final answers are in lowest terms. Now, we're going to look at the first example and we have two-thirds times seven-fifths. And one of the things I want you to know about multiplying fractions is that Luckily for us, no common denominator is needed between two fractions in order to multiply them. So this is a good thing. So we are ready to multiply straight across. What that means is that we're going to multiply the numerators together and we're going to multiply the denominators together. So 2 times 7 is 14 and 3 times 5 is 15. Now you always want to check that your answers can whether they can be simplified further and we know that 14 and 15 do not have any common factors so this is indeed the lowest term. Here's our next example 3 halves times 5 eighths and again we can multiply straight across and 3 times 5 is 15 and 2 times 8 is 16 15 and 16 don't have any common factors, so we are done. Okay, here we have 21 over 32 times 32 over 21. If we multiply across, 21 times 32 is 672, big number, and 32 times 21 is 672. And 672 divided by 672, well, we all know that equals 1. So this big fraction actually does reduce to 1. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I don't really want to multiply 21 times 32, especially if by any chance I don't have a calculator. So what we can do is we can do some of the reducing ahead of time before multiplying the numerators and the denominators. And we could notice that the first fraction has a 21 in the numerator and the second fraction has a 21 in the denominator so these two are going to divide out and leave a 1. Similarly, there's a 32 in this numerator and a 32 in this denominator and these actually reduce to 1. And now when we multiply across we get 1 over 1 which is 1, so we get the same answer. Now we have 7 ninths times 3 fourteenths. And we're going to use the technique that we practiced in the last problem, which is we're going to check to see if there are any common factors between numerators and denominators. And I bet you can see that we actually do have some common factors. This 7 and the 14 have a factor of 7 in common. So we know that 7 is equal to 7 times 1. And we know that 14 is equal to 7 times 2. So we can reduce the 7s, leaving us with 1 over 2. Similarly with the 3 and the 9. 9 is 3 times 3. 3 is 3 times 1, the 3's reduce, and so we're left with a 1 on top and a 3 in the denominator of the first fraction. Now we're ready to multiply across. So what we have here now is 1 times 1 on the top and we have a 3 times 2 or 6 on the bottom. What's nice about this technique is that your answer is already in lowest terms so you don't have to reduce. 5 times 7 tenths. Now this will be easier to do if we put a denominator on 5 because 5 can also be written as 5 over 1. So let's rewrite that uh, fraction first, first off. 5 over 1, 5 divided by 1 is 5 and then we have our 7 tenths. Now we're going to look for common factors between numerators and denominators and you probably saw that 5 and 10 have a greatest common factor of 5. So we're going to take that off first. 
5 is 5 times 1, 10 is 5 times 2, the 5's are going to reduce and we have 1 half. And that's it because that 7 is prime. So we are going to now multiply across. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 2 is 2. So we have 7 halves as our fraction. Now, if you, we'll be talking about how to switch those fractions into mixed numbers. And 7 halves, as you know, is 3.5 or 3 and a half. Okay, now we're going to try some fractions that involve variables. As you know, variables are representative of unknown numbers or unknown quantities, so we're going to treat them just the same as we would treat numbers. And you may have noticed that we have a numerator and a denominator that are exactly alike, so we are going to reduce the y's. So this y and that y are going to reduce and leave us once, just like if they were numbers. Other than that, the x and the z are two different variables and don't have anything in common, so we're ready to multiply across. And x times 1 is x. 1 times z is z. So your final answer, x over z. Okay, and now for our last problem of this video, we've got a more complicated problem. We've got letters and we've got also numbers. So we have variables and coefficients. But again, remember that 5y is the same thing as 5 times y. So we can reduce this 5 without 5 and it'll leave a y below and a 1 above. For x, similarly, that's the same thing as 4 times x. And 8 can be factored as 4 times 2. So we can reduce these 4's, leaving x on the top and a 2 on the bottom. And now we're ready to go ahead and multiply across. And as we've talked about before, 1 times x is x, and 2 times y is 2y. And that's our final answer. So to recap, remember that when multiplying fractions, you don't need a common denominator. You want to look for common factors with numerators and denominators that you can reduce and simplify. And then you're going to multiply across always check your last answer to make sure that it can't be simplified further.